What do you get when you combine flowers that whisper thoughts of the dead, a parking lot full of soldiers and eternal sleep, and the ever-looming presence of the impending apocalypse? A hauntingly beautiful adventure. Today I will explore the main storyline as well as the meaning of both endings of Season A Letter to the Future. Season has two endings, both of which are pretty similar, but actually there is way more difference between the two of them than is obvious on the surface. Now, in order to understand the significance of the end of season, we first have to understand Pate's prophetic dream as well as a little bit about the history of the world the game is set in. The events of the game are set in motion after Estelle's friend Pate has a dream, which Elder Francis recognizes to be a vision that the current season is about to end. Seasons are essentially an era in time and, in many cases, when the seasons change, entire communities or even generations of people no longer remember anyone or anything from the previous season. Although the people in Cairo are protected from the change in the season, Estelle chooses to go out into the world for the very first time to record the world, which was always a dream of her father who has since passed away. Her mother makes her an identity pendant to protect her memories and personality while on her adventure. During the flashback, Pate described his dream. He is in the forest where the sun is bright and he is hungry. When he sees fruit trees, he reaches out for a shiny red apple. However, he falls to the ground and when he does, the apples change in all sorts of ways. Then a voice tells Pate that these are not apples, but instead they are memories of every apple he's ever eaten. And there is something wrong with his eyes and something wrong with the soil. The voice encourages him to look with them into the sun to clear out his vision because the visions want to melt away. Pate is uncertain, but when he sees Estelle watching and taking notes from the shadows, he feels safe to look into the sun. And when he does, he loses track of everything and he doesn't even recognize the fruit in his hand, but he tastes it and finds it to be the most delicious delicious thing ever. Pate's vision alludes to the gray hands of Tiang Valley, who are secretly working to end the present season and start a new one as a way to rid the community from all of the bad memories lingering from the war season. The war, which lasted for 10 years, began because soldiers from the prismatic grounds were taking over societies. However, they were eventually forced to retreat when the far wastes fought back, causing much of the army to end up in Tiang Valley, who took over the land and terrorized the inhabitants. It is well known in the valley that Sonya the monk ended the war in 780 with a big prayer to the tide, the god of sleep, by using the psychoactive energy of Harpic. God of sleep. I've been gathering harpic, and I've been gathering courage. If my big prayer is wrong, if it goes against divine will, please spare the people of this valley. We're so desperate for peace. While Sonya and the villagers remained safe in the shrine, all of the soldiers were stricken with dream sickness and fell into an eternal sleep. The people here are so weak. I heard gunshots last night. That was us. <laughs> what is that? Look at the pond. The water. What is that pattern? Should we run or something? Neither living nor dead, they will never age, but they will never awaken. It is with the use of Harpic that the Grey Hands are collecting that they intend to use a big prayer to the Void, the God of Forgetting, to erase everyone's collective memory on day zero. Harpic is described by Estelle as memories and emotions condensed into a mineral that mostly accumulates around objects of strong sentimental value. It's used in rituals such as prayer at the shrines of the den, the tide, and the void. However, the radiating psychoactive energy of Harpic has been causing disturbances contaminating the soil and the minds of the inhabitants. As this cycles through the ecosystem, it creates points of pressure where things bleed, and soil and human minds are contaminated. Some will say, what's a few daytime visions? But it is an increasing risk, an increasing danger. Kochi's father, Yuri, was working to understand and neutralize these negative effects. Although his results were successful, his repeated testing ultimately overwhelmed his mind and he passed away. It's his work we hear on the recording that the Grey Hands are using to learn how to utilize the power of Harpic on the minds of the villagers. I set up a singing bowl so I can verify the pattern that will form in the water. And some Harpic, of course. The... <laughs> 
Also, Kochi likely hopes that Harpic energy in the soil, combined with the sentimental items he places on his father's grave, will grow a memory flower so that he can hear him once again. In Pate's vision, memories are represented by apples which turn rotten, unripe, different colors, they are missing and eaten. The voice that Pate hears, the one that encourages him to look into the sun, appears to be the voices of the gray hands. He describes the faces that keep changing as everyone yet no one, just as the gray hands all blend together as a collective unit. As Estelle explores Tiang Valley, she learns that the gray hands are planning a controlled destruction of the dam since no one alive remembers how to fix it, and they are sending everyone to safety in Radiant City, which they call a blank canvas for your dreams. However, we later learn about Day Zero, which in the dream is represented by the light that makes visions melt away. In the Day Zero Reel, which has a real propaganda vibe to it, we further learn that the Grey Hands are working to position themselves as the ones who will usher in the new season and who bow to do things right this time around and build a better season than before. A warm bath of ideas, they call it. Ah, oh, thank you. I forgot the Day Zero materials. You know, the visual literature, the, the, the warm bath of ideas? At the end of the game, if you choose not to help the Grey Hand by taking a picture for the passport, Estelle will question him about what they're doing in the valley, but he assures her that everything will be okay. If you do decide to take pictures for the passport, the Grey Hand thanks Estelle and she will learn that their new name after the season will be Floral Path. Side note, there are so many indications that the Grey Hands want to be perceived as the good guys. They just want to be loved. They wrote down nothing but positive comments from those in the valley, and they love the suggestion of changing their name to Blissful Future once the new season begins. Oh, not bad. Blissful Future. Feels comfortable. Sounds like there's no worries with that one. I think that's the direction we should go. However, if you persist through the prompts on the phone tree, you will learn that the so-called helpline is not actually supposed to help at all. Well, hi. I'm so exhausted recording these lines. This phone tree isn't supposed to yield you any information. They designed it to frustrate you. They don't want to answer questions. They just want to give you an outlet. A robot voice to be mad at. Organizing human activity has its upsides and its downsides. So are they truly good guys on a mission to improve the lives of their neighbors? Or is being completely in control of the narrative of the future too much power for one group of people? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comments. But what about those endings though? In his vision, Pate takes comfort in seeing Estelle in the shadows taking notes, just like how she's been keeping note of all of her experiences in her journal throughout the game. If you select the prompt to ask him about seeing Estelle, he will interpret this as, You were there, but you were separate. Whatever happens to us, we need you to keep an eye out. Somebody has to stay normal. Somebody has to not look into the sun. This is a direct reference to Estelle's decision at the end of the game, where she can decide not to share the power of her identity pendant with the others in the village. The memory I'll lose is the one we're forming right now. I want you to have it forever. We're standing here. You're having a last taste of home. Now you're protected by lost memories. In the light, in the pattern of the surface of the water, I felt the god of forgetting wrap their arms around me. A wave of amnesia. But when they opened their mouth, I heard my mother's voice instead. I step into the next season with my mind intact. But what about everyone else? So, in this instance, choosing to stay protected by her mother's lost memories and not suffer from the collective amnesia of the changing season honors her mother's wishes as well as addresses Pate's fears. Maybe she can use that knowledge to have someone go scoop up those sleeping soldiers floating out there in the floodwaters. If you choose to ask about the ghost person, Pate shares a story about the difficulty of his birth. My birth was not easy. I was bigger than most babies. After I was born, the elder advised them not to have any more children. 
However, she later becomes pregnant and loses this child, leaving Pate carrying the guilt of the death of his unborn sibling. He recalled always carrying a piece of that memory with him, but ultimately had to let them go, which felt like a piece of him was dying. He will say to Estelle that, It hurts a lot, but it's a nice thing to do if you can. To let part of you become part of everything. Which may be alluding to Estelle needing to share her memories in a collective pendant, which will allow her to forget the past at the turn of the season, and she will become as much a part of everything as everyone else. Pate recalled in the dream that after looking into the light, he forgets everything, and he doesn't even know what fruit he's holding. But when his senses return, it's the most delicious thing he's ever seen. This is directly related to what happens when Estelle shares her identity pendant. blinding light, and a strange pattern disappeared off the surface of the water. My mind emptied out, but then my senses came alive. And just like with her new as an island friend on the boat, they are on equal ground now, and without her journal, she would have never even known she was missing any memories at all. I became aware of a massive absence. And I realized that if it wasn't for this journal, I wouldn't even know I lost anything at all. These pages are a little bridge between us and the world that just disappeared. I'd love to hear your thoughts about my interpretation and for you to share your own thoughts in the comments. And if you're interested in more explanations of games and discussing the importance of a game's ending, I have a video for you right here.